here with the great Ben Kronberg. It's the comedy's best kept secret tour podcast. It seems like you're not going to I'm making so that you are. It's a lot of my hand. I bet I am. A lot of my hand in this video now. Uh, welcome. Uh, it's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. We met, we've met, we met three-ish days ago. We met before. Uh, but now we're... Well, it's kind of like, uh... It was kind of like online dating where we had a yeah had an internet courtship and then we were texting. I wasn't sure how many emojis I was allowed to send you. I definitely I definitely overdid the emojis. I think yeah. for one man to another man kind of conversation. Yeah, I was like, I wonder how many other comedians he's texting. Like, <laughs> I wonder. <laughs> Does he is, is is like am I his poop emoji comedian or is he? <laughs> Do you so, like do you like emoji or emoticon? Uh, I've I've uh, I don't know I've, I've assimilated so it's emoji. Emoji. Yeah. Emoticon was a different thing. I think you come from a simpler time. Do you like yeah I'm, I'm forty. Do you like um, what, what's that mochi ice cream? Have you ever had mochi? Mochi. It's like um, another it's like a Japanese. No, oh, the it's kind of like, like gelatin weird. Thing. I've never had the ice cream. No, I don't know if it's ice cream. It's just something weird. Uh, I thought it was like a coffee tech drink. That's uh, Machi? That's, a, uh, that's ma- ma- Matcha. Matcha, that's different. No, that's I've like never a green had tea. No, I've not had Machi. There's bubble tea. I have emotions. You have those? Yeah. I have those. My mom sends me a lot of emojis on, you know, like when I'm like, hey, I'll call you later, and then she'll give a thumbs up and then a heart, you know? Yeah. And that's pretty good. That's sweet. I'm glad that I can do that. That's sweet. And then I send her a, then I send her an eggplant with some waters, some water, yeah. the three drops of water. Yeah. She so, hang out. She, so she, she, she interprets that as get the eggplant ready. <laughs> yeah, she's like, oh, Baba Ganesh again. You have to soak the eggplant. So no, it, it is interesting because we because we hadn't met. I've heard I'd heard of you. Yeah. Uh, on various other road trips. So I've I've gotten to, to think that I that I do sort of know you, even though the whole time that I've sort of known you, you've not known that I was alive. So there's like I knew no, I knew you were alive. I just kept a safe distance. <laughs> so there was a two year gap where people were talking about how much they loved you. Um, um, but comedy's interesting because we do we're like we'll um, we'll just get in a car with some dude. Yeah. And drive well, five hours. Well, then we both live in in New York. The greater New York City area. Yeah, I live in Queens. You live you got, and that's and that's why it's even weird that we had to come to Springfield, Missouri to meet. Me, yeah. But uh, are you doing the same thing? You got a guy that you know vaguely in Memphis is going to Nashville. You're just gonna get a car with him. I know, but yeah, I, I trust a lot of. I mean, I think the the internet makes you feel a little bit safer because of the the record. Like I wouldn't necessarily, um, you know, go on Craigslist or or something and be like, hey, I'm looking for a ride from. Memphis to Nashville, yeah. but that there's people that I've met maybe just once or many times, not at all, that you come recommend and you come vetted by somebody or just like, oh, this person looks, you know, I, I actually looked for a picture of your car. <laughs> <laughs> Did you really? No. <laughs> but I do love that's a, not a bad. Uh, that's not a bad thought process. I do love a Subaru. Subarus are great. Is this, is this all-wheel drive? This is all-wheel drive. Are yeah. they all the time? All the time. That's what all-wheel drive. All-wheel all drive all the time, yeah. Do you, know, do you understand the, the mechanism of all-wheel drive? Um, I mean, I know it's different than four-wheel drive. Yeah, well, four-wheel drive is always, is four wheels are engaged, but they're not necessarily communicating. And not that all-wheel drive is necessarily communicating, but uh, if there is one wheel doing more than another, then the other wheel will, will adjust. Or if there's a place where a wheel is not catching traction, then that wheel will, will, will speed up or slow down so that we regain traction. If you're four-wheel drive, just think of it as a rigid axle. Yeah, and it's all one. It's just going to always one, go. It's so just all stuck do in it independently. Line. Yeah. It's like you got four horses on this carriage. Right. And they'll adjust and they actually go different speeds. And they're, you know, it's all a big dance. It's all a big horse dance. Yeah. Horseplay. A little horseplay. It's a horseplay. It's horseplay and horsepower. How much horse? How much horseplay you got in this thing? Yeah. People ask me that all the time. How much horsepower? And they, and they say no, no, uh, no horsepowering around. No 
horsepowering. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, well, that's not going to help the, the podcast audio right there. Well, it'll be, you know, you can just go into like a song during that time. <laughs> like uh, the, yeah. like McCall, uh, uh, Dawson McAllister. So we were listening to um, this interesting fellow yep. who runs a Christian, I think a Christian program, because he talked about God quite a bit. Yeah, he slipped God in. He, well, he wasn't, like, overt with God, yeah. but it was definitely, you know... Yeah, when would he sneak it in? Because he would sneak stuff in. He would sneak God in, he would sneak God sex lo- in. He didn't, yeah, he, he didn't, he, did he say God loves you at some point? Or, I feel maybe. Or, like... Something about being responsible to God. Mm-hmm. Or maybe using, yeah, maybe using God as a side. Well, he like, referenced, like, Proverbs. He definitely, he definitely did that. He, he referenced Because I remember he, yeah, he said one and you didn't, and you didn't, you didn't like that he just left it alone and yeah. You said, what does that mean, Dawson? Proverbs. Um, I can't remember. Do you remember what it was? Proverb. No, I don't remember. Proverbs um, speaking. It was... Let's see. It, it, it's better to... Oh, I remember what it was. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, it yeah. was better to have a... Um, something about better to strike a friend than to, than to kiss a, uh, an enemy. Something like it's, that. It's, yeah, it's better to wound a friend than kiss an enemy. Yeah, yeah. It's better to, it's better to finger a friend than <laughs> spit in an enemy's mouth. <laughs> Have you ever fingered a friend? Um, no, just after, afterwards they became friends. Yeah, we, we, we became friends. You fingered someone and then they, be, and then they became friends. Yeah, yeah cause, cause I mean, I guess everything is like a friend is just how long you're a friend for. Like you have the joke, if it's yeah. you know, three days. Yeah. Not even yeah. Well, yeah, because the, the question becomes uh, how much of your finger has to go inside of your friend before they're no longer your friend? Mm-hmm. What's the threshold? Yeah. The that, threshold. The threshold. That's, that's the one that I, this is the one that I don't always see eye to eye with, uh, with, with, with women that I, that I talk to is, you know, I think a lot of women um, will masquerade their relationships with men that they know are into them as friendships. And you'd be like, okay, well, that makes sense, and, you know, and and uh, but then but then you find out that there may be some sexual intercourse among friends, and I don't, and that's not how I define my friends. If I, if I have sex with somebody, that's not that's not a friend of mine anymore. So what is I mean? So what can a friend is a friend somebody that I mean? There's qual. I think there's intersecting qualities. The Venn the Venn diagram of friendship and lover. Well, like, you know, I mean, there's probably things you'll tell a friend that you wouldn't tell somebody that you're just having sex with, you know, you're more right. likely to divulge, but there's also probably, you know, maybe um, things that somebody who you've, you've been intimate with would know about you that a friend wouldn't because they're things that aren't necessarily talked about like that. Yeah. That, that little mole on your head, you know? Yeah. And that's, that's, like, that's a you bit of You told me we weren't going to talk about that mole. That's a little, that's a little bit of you. That's, that's, that's a little touch of... But that's, that's on me. That's, that's on me whether or not I'm going to bring up the ball on my hip. It's not your responsibility. You don't get to decide whether or not we bring up the ball on my hip. I mean, it was a theoretical ball. I don't even know if that. If oh, that I is thought you saw. Oh, I thought you saw the ball. It could just be uh, ra- it could just be razor burn that started me off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I I agree on some on some sense, but I don't. I but that's and that's my daily struggle is this idea of how much we're supposed to tell everybody and each other and how honest we're supposed to be with each other and what, you know, what what falls into the line of I don't have to tell you this and what falls into the line of I should be telling you this because I think everybody should, I just don't, I don't understand secrets, I don't believe a lot in secrets, I think, I think that's one of the biggest problems societally is that we don't feel necessarily responsible to tell everybody everything and we think and we think that that's our privacy um, and whatever we hold private is you know is the dirty information and it's like you know only sins are secrets right and I, and I you know <laughs> what about a surprise what about like a surprise you're planning for somebody sure you're gonna let the cat out of the bag well and I think and I think I'm that. shitty with that's that a, that's a secret and I think I'm shitty with that. I think I think I'm a guy who's, who's never had a surprise party thrown for him because I, uh, I'll like get to the bottom of the secret and then I'll because you know I'll people are mark. sneaking around. You're yeah, like, I'll feel it. Yeah, I get angry about it. 
How many people? How many people have gotten uh, divorced because somebody was planning a, a surprise party and they thought they were cheating? cheating yeah. yeah. I mean, that's a good question. I mean, maybe that's the best passive aggressive way to get divorced. Just to <laughs> plan a surprise, <laughs> surprise, party, surprise party, but do it like a year before, <laughs> so you can just exhibit that behavior for the a really whole long time, time. <laughs> and you can never be wrong. That's vindictive. I like that. Never be wrong. I was planning your surprise party, but now it's over. It's ruined. Uh-huh. We're done. Yeah. Yeah. Or the or the that that uh, I don't know. Similar, like say the double-edged uh, sword or the, the danger zone of like the the therapist who you'd be attracted to. Like, oh, you're going to therapy um, or couples therapy, and uh, the therapist is you know attractive to one of you. Yeah. Are you attracted? Like, can you can you receive therapy from somebody that you're attracted to? Because a therapist should also be somebody you can open up to and perhaps share your secrets with. Right. But you know, or things, your fears. A lot of times, fears are also secrets, right? The things that we won't even tell ourselves. That, right. So that then, then you get this that level of intimacy with a with a therapist that you couldn't otherwise have. Yeah. Yeah. So even even having not you know be, you know. Perhaps the therapist is the only one you can talk to somebody about, but then you become the, you know, then they become your emotional, that, that that's why I'm, I'm like, we're in therapy because of the emotional dependence sure. that you can have on somebody like that, but also another relationship to worry about what they think of you. Right. right. You know, like, how do you, where do you yeah, talk the, about yeah, your therapy there, session to Right, right, yeah, because now there's a line. End. Right, because now there's a line, you got to see a therapist to talk about the therapy. And then, and then your therapist is talking to his therapist about... Yeah, and like, is my therapist... You know, by law, therapists... By law or whatever, their oath is they, they can't necessarily talk about their clients, right? Right. But, by law, humans uh, break rules. Yeah. You know, like, right. if there's any law greater than, you know, whatever, it's breaking rules. And sure. so, like, we're all... I wouldn't want to go to a therapist that is any less human than me. Right. Therefore, I would expect them to, like, spill my beans to their... To somebody else. Yeah. And yeah. I got, you know, they're at the fucking bar. I got this... Well, I don't know. I think, well, so, <laughs> uh, if you're a therapist, is it is it the details of the, the story that you're harping on? Because you figure you, you've heard everything. Or is it the way that the communication is happening? Like, what's the exciting part? It's probably the way the communication is happening. And the takeaways are are, are less specific to the details of, oh, I told them that my father did this or that. Yeah. You know, and it's more to the idea that this is how this person communicates. And that's what's interesting. Or they're, you know, it's so clear to me that they're, that they're shutting uh, a portion of themselves down. And, you know, and I have to baby step my way into their life so that they can open that part. You know what I mean? So I think... It's probably a more evolved thing than well, the therapist but, is going to his girlfriend and going, man, this guy fucked he, up shit. Yeah, but I, well, I mean, I think that the, the helping part where it's like the how the communication is or isn't happening, but I think there probably are some instances of some pretty, you know, like I've never heard that before. Sure. You know, and like when you, I don't know if you've ever seen a Lars von Trier film. Um, not Andy knowing. Christ, like, seen Antichrist. No. They're pretty intense films. They they all kind of are very very bleak, kind of like Darren Aronofsky films. Okay. A little bit more st- still yet a, a touch darker okay. in a way. Um, but to me it's like whenever I see one of those films, if I don't talk about that movie with somebody then I'm sort of like possessed with it. You know, like oh, I gotta wow. get it off my chest. Yeah, yeah. So sometimes when you hear fucked up things, so like what if a therapist has a therapist so they can talk about right who they've been and that's like the the workaround yeah like that's their legal way or, you right know. but I but then I feel like a therapist uh, <coughs> probably makes seeing a therapist about themselves but maybe there is maybe there is that relationship who pays who yeah do they yeah you can well, they don't well there's always there's gonna be a, it's probably be a more senior therapist well, this was interesting. I was somebody, I don't remember who this was in my life, but they were telling me, um, it's interesting, and I'm at a weird age where, like, I kind of, um, I look for holes in people's credibility when I first meet them, just to kind of figure out, how, you know, uh, how they are. It's probably a pessimistic approach, but I, I disguise it to myself as optimism, right, because I'm looking for people, uh, 
people are like myself that don't say things and they don't believe just because there's somebody in the room, right? So there was a girl who was telling me about how much research she did in finding a therapist because she was looking for somebody that was very like-minded and that comes from a similar background as her so that they could uh, have more shared experiences in therapy. And I thought that that was sort of the opposite of what you should be going for because you're looking for perspective on a thing and the perspective should be if not uh, the most opposite end of the spectrum of yours for you to gain any uh, clarity on right? any distance between the two if the person just says oh yeah I get it that happened to me then you're just going to sit in this this like cauldron of like I don't know similar opinion and thought that you'll never get out of it. Yeah. Yeah, the, well, the, yeah, how do you choose? You know, when you're choosing a physician, you're given the option, like, would you like a male or a female? Yeah, right. Sometimes now you can get to see profiles, and like, uh, you know. Yeah. You get to actually, like, curate the experience as if, as if by dating site or something. Right, right. Um, but you're, you're only typically ever given the choice of male or female. Yeah. But why not, like, would you like a Mexican therapist? You know, right. like, right. somebody... Because maybe... An Aquarius who grew up in upstate New York? Yeah, yeah. A, a, definitely not a Taurus. Uh, <laughs> you know, like, therapy based on your zodiac sign. That would be a good, yeah. another good racket. I, I think, to I think too much funny. choice is, is part of what the problem is that we're dealing with all across the board. Uh, and we, I'm not enough of an expert to know what kind of whatever I should be having. You know what I mean? Like that's there. You know what I mean? Like, if, like if I'm doing research on surgeons. What do I, you know, what do I know about the guy? Uh, there's certain things I don't know, and I gotta, you know, we gotta, we gotta leave it in their hands as to what, what is the incredible. Way. I don't know. The biggest problem, with I think, that, is that I don't think a lot of people are as obsessed and um, you know, in love with their professions as like the mediums. So you got a guy who was a doctor, but his pipe dream was to always be something else. Mm-hmm. And so he's, you know, so his daydreams are about the something else. Yeah, he, yeah, he wanted to uh, be a choo-choo train driver. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> his dreams were crushed by the invention of uh, the automobile. He didn't even know it. Well, there's all sorts of ways Henry, to... Henry, uh, Ford, Henry as, Ford, as you told me yesterday. Yeah. Yeah, buying up all the choo-choo... No more choo-choo trains. No more choo-choo, choo-choo trains tracks. for any... Yeah, you know, choo-choo tracks for anybody. <laughs> Everybody has beep-beeps. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I remember I, I've only ever been in therapy once. Um, it was after my parents got divorced, and it wasn't for that. It was because I had OCD, and I, I was yeah. washing my hands a lot, okay. like a, a crazy amount. And just a, I was a real germaphobe. Like enough point. to like have physical yeah. problems? Yeah, on my hands. And so this therapist that I went to, he was a, I do kind of remember how he looked, and it was like a kind of an older guy, maybe semi-balding, a little bit of a... You know, ponytail and glasses, real soft smoke, and maybe, you know, shorter, stockier sausage fingers, but, you know, probably lived in Boulder, Colorado or something. Yeah. But what he recommended me do, and I, I mean, I talked about things and my mom's boyfriends, and that was always kind of a problem, and different, you know, different things that, that were like things that I didn't have control over. And, right. And so, like, then worrying about my immediate environment and doing all these things. But his, um, his remedy to kind of um, wean me off of the, the obsessiveness of it was putting peanut butter on the backs of my hands and leaving the peanut butter there for like while you were 15 in, minutes. While you were in the office? No, like at home. Oh. Like that was a thing to do, like a, like a really? thing just so I would have to deal with like force myself to deal with this yeah. thing that obviously shouldn't be there. Yeah. But but gain the perspective perhaps of it's just peanut butter. Nothing's gonna happen. Nothing's gonna yeah. happen. It's just peanut butter.
well, so for you, the the and I've loved peanut butter ever since. See, <laughs> <laughs> I always leave a little on my knuckles, <laughs> just in case I get hungry. I just go fist first in that jar. <laughs> Um, well, so so then for you it was more about. Uh, I got this for you. Mm-hmm. Oh, thanks. Um, oh, this could be natural. That's my favorite. Yeah. So the um, so for you it was more about. It was kind of like how somebody else might um, come across like cutting. Yeah. Was the the OCD was like the control aspect of it. Yeah. Um, but that but isn't cutting also like perhaps like originates a lot of times more from traumatic experiences or violence I don't know well, I don't yeah, I've, I've no I've no psycho, psychological background I've no psychology I, neither I really does Dawson McAllister but he at least gives it a shot <laughs> at least he at least digs us up a proverb or something yeah I liked when I liked when he and it was funny when he would uh, he would say they would be telling the problems and he'd be like have you been in this situation before is this why you're acting you know so yeah. he has some knowledge yeah the problem that I have with that kind of thing is that it makes everything and, and, I, and I guess I have this fear it makes everything feel um, less specific to you and more consequential like the reason why you're doing this is this exact thing and you, almost like your experiences uh, don't matter because there's you know if this happens to you then most likely this is what you're you're, you're, you're going to do next yeah that's because it sort of devalues the individual although I guess that's the goal right yeah. is, to, is to make you feel not alone not alone and also I think the like the ego the ego would have us believe believe ourselves as Individ- more individuals or solitary or you know like I am I am the most important right. thing or I am I'm the only one experiencing this thing or only one experiencing it like this but I think the you know as we can look out into the planets or just look out into this drive right here like all these trees every single one is like infinitely different but infinitely the same they're all trees right yeah. it's like ah oh, they're all trees they're all a little bit different. Everybody grows a little bit different, but they all grow the similarly in the same soil. Yeah. They all react similarly in the same environment, and we are these trees that are, you know, sometimes we lose our leaves, and some, but sometimes we... And sometimes the guy from PSENG comes and cuts the, the things <laughs> off so he doesn't knock down his power lines. Yeah, and yeah, then, exactly. And then that tree has to live like that. Gentrification, yeah. Right. You take out the, the, right. the bad trees, plant the good trees. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. The, I, I really love Love Lines. Did you ever listen to Love Lines? With Dr. Drew? Yeah. And, uh, I listened to it more voyeuristic because I was 14, 13, okay. 14 at the time. Yeah. So I just wanted to hear something about boobs yeah, or yeah, dicks yeah, yeah. or vaginas. And I thought uh-huh. like that was going to be my, my lesson of how to uh, learn about sex. Cause, you know, I was going to talk about my parents. Um, but I, I, I never... I never had a perspective on it to, to like listen to it as in you know hear somebody else's problems and feel when was the first time you encountered sex the idea of sex I was um I was kind of a weirdo because I was like I was masturbating long before there was any effects on me physically oh wow um, so I was masturbating from like uh, first grade okay really Uh, yeah, well, no, I was I was more of like a I was more of like a like a pressure up my hands kind of guy. Uh huh. My mom my mom had a name for it. It's called wrenching. Wrenching. Yeah, and I was I I, I have vivid memories of, of being uh, told not to wrench because we had company. Okay. Uh, which is I mean, I think it's kind of normal, you know. It's that a means normal it, thing. Yeah, but that means I was just wrenching, just in the living room when we didn't have company. Like it was, like you just couldn't stop me from basically masturbating in public. I mean the public space of my family, but um, but it was a close-on kind of thing. And then that was the interesting thing was was once I once there was a, a result, I had to change all the all the tactics because I didn't want to be part. I didn't want to yeah. be responsible for the mess of the whole thing. Yeah, straight into the toilet. Uh, 
Uh, into what? Into the toilet? <laughs> Straight into the toilet? No, no, I had, I had, I had all kinds of various oh, methods oh, over the years. All kinds of methods. Mm-hmm. The original, well, the original method was let the mess happen and then, and then, and then try to clean it up. And then, uh, over the years, it's been coming up with ways to just make yeah, it so that you, the mess doesn't exist. You gotta take care of all, an olive oil spill right away. <laughs> <laughs> so that eventually, some soda water. On so, that, <laughs> so that eventually, it was, it was make it so that the mess doesn't, doesn't doesn't get on the things that uh, that are that are more permanent. You do it on hard, wipeable surfaces. <laughs> no, I don't do that. I do, floors, I do that now. Marble. I do that now. In fact, I do this thing now where um, where if, if if I'm feuding with a person, I'll find I'll find a you know I'll find a carpet. If I just happen to be in their home and I'm in the process, then I I I, I enjoy the the knowledge, being the only one who knows. That have come somewhere on their carpet. <laughs> I enjoy that, that information. <laughs> like, like a feuding with like a yeah, whoever. Yeah. Well, the first time this ever happened was I, <laughs> was I staying with a girlfriend in in Connecticut. Is when she was she was the, the person that was allowing me to uh, first get to New York City uh, okay. with without having to, to to pay a lot of money to so get like the little trial run. Yeah, you I need, stayed you know. there for like three weeks before I was found an apartment, and. Um, and there was just a couple of these weird little fights where, like, the roommate who I knew before I knew the, the, the girlfriend, uh, somehow now was starting to be uncomfortable with me being in the house if the girlfriend wasn't there. So we, so then I'd be kicked out on weekends where I had no other place to go. And so uh, my my takeaway was so you, I'm going to come up. So who you were you mad at the roommate? Well, I was mad at the, well, the, I, can't, I, didn't, I didn't feel justified to be mad at the roommate, so I felt justified to be mad at the girlfriend because it was her relationship with the Did roommate she that she could have uh, facilitated the conversation rather than just go, okay, whatever you want, I don't want to fight. So for me, uh, you know, leaving, leaving a little sprinkle on the carpet was enough for me to feel. What kind of carpet, what, like what color carpet was it? I won't color blind, so it was some, oh, okay. some kind of like earth tone right. color. You know, one, and it was one of these like nylon-y kind of thing. It was the permanent carpet of the, you know, of the thing, of an apartment yeah. complex is that one. So it's yeah, like, yeah. it's a white or, or like a cream or like a tan or like, you So know, do you think they got their deposit, their deposit <laughs> back? <laughs> <laughs> or do you think somebody's like, you're going to have it too. Like how much, how much is carpet come clean up worse <laughs> in a deposit scenario? Like how much? Yeah. Is that fifty bucks? Is that, is that yeah? I guess it depends bucks? on how long uh, you, you know you've let it ripen. How right. much? How much would somebody have to pay you to take care of that? That was somebody else's. Me? Yeah. Oh, what? Well, you know, and that's that's the thing. thing you would, but you know. Yeah. Well, I, I didn't choose. That's the thing. It's like I didn't choose that uh, that that go around, right? So it's like uh, for me, it would be a lot because I, I don't enjoy doing that. But then it's like then you talk to somebody whose profession that they chose is is to be a maid because maybe they maybe they have a thing where they like the clean up part of it. Uh, then you know it, that'd be the that'd be the person that's a less it's less money. Like the amount of money you have to pay a comedian to do comedy is far lower than what you'd have to pay any other person that has a job to do comedy because we actually like doing it. Like we know that we would do this for free. We, you know, we try not to do that. But uh, the first time I got paid, I was like, this is way more money than I need. I would do this for none of this money. Yeah. So for me, cleaning up some else's coat. It's called nanny. <laughs> How so much nanny did you get paid? <laughs> so I don't want my own cum touching me. So I, I can't imagine how upset I would you be. Don't if somebody, want, you don't want your own cum. No, I don't want my own you. cum on me. So I can't imagine how upset I would be if somebody else's. Interesting. Cum okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, do you, you, you didn't do you want me, on, you didn't want me eating a muffin in here, so I get that. Um, or, uh, yeah, I don't want you eating anything. I don't even. I don't, I'm not even. I'm not even confident that I'm that I'm uh, that I'm okay with the fact that there is cum inside your body right now. That pers- don't worry, there's not that much <laughs> that could slip out at any time. Okay. <laughs> tapped out at the moment. Uh, I get just really, really dehydrated on the road, so um, it's there, but it's like, yeah. you know. Well, so I just I just divulged all of my masturbation secrets. What, what was your first? Uh, what was my- like uh, okay, so like uh, I don't know. What did you say? Um, experience with sex. Well, yeah, I think ex- like I yeah, I think self discovery versus the uh, encountering um, uh, you know or or, or yeah, glimpsing your own sexuality uh, might be might be distinguished because I remember being 
you know, having, you know, nation boners in the, in the, uh... Nation boners? Nation, like, but baby oh. nation, it's a, it's a stupid good word, it's a nation, it's like a baby, like a... You're a good word done. Dormant, um, uh, supple. Uh, <laughs> some, some painful baby boner. The, yeah, I mean, I remember having those things and not really knowing what they would equate to. But do you think you had a? Do you think? Do you, what, what do you think your best boner was? How old were you when you had your best boner? My best boner. My best boner days are behind me. But <laughs> let me think. Um, I mean, it's probably like the first ones, like or the, the ones that after sex ed, because that kind of completed this idea in my mind. And, had sex ed in sixth grade and like so then all through like junior high and high school junior high I won the the, the health award which health the health class was all mostly like a lot about sex ed so it was the best boner did that, did so that, after did that go into the, the best order? boner was yeah um, <laughs> the uh, that's one of the categories yeah, yeah, yeah. not the biggest Arnold's boner but just best boner you know? <laughs> just in the Arnold. bravest boner <laughs> just bravest, <laughs> bravest boner what's the bravest boner the one that, the one that just pops up in science class yeah just on, on, undeterred by uh, the fact that you're writing on the chalkboard. board yeah bravest um, boner the uh, uh, yeah it was at, in the sixth grade after that and then I found out about that and then like you know, the, there were the girls in class that were like, they were the girls that, oh, that's a cute girl, even though nowadays I'm my toy, I have a totally different type. I'm not in the sixth graders anymore. Yeah, well, um, yeah. We, we all evolved. But as when people. I was in sixth grade, I was totally in, uh, into sixth graders. Yeah. Uh, and. No, but I didn't, I still didn't know at that time exactly how women worked and how vaginas worked, you know, like I thought... 34, that, I still not. Still I thought not. that they went straight in like like a standing body. I thought the vagina was literally, it was it like a hole in the front of the body. Yeah. And so actually having to shift my realization and knowledge of like, oh no, it, it's actually like that. I mean, even though it makes yeah. perfect sense. Yeah. It's still like, wait, what? And that's still, why I'm... Still to this day? No, but but just like even even some positions, I'm like that. Yeah, I like that idea, but like, that's not that's just like visual splendor for people watching it yeah. more than more than actually actual what, enjoyment. Yeah, what, what the enjoyment is because because you have to your penis has to be bent into a ninety degree angle. Yeah, or there's a, yeah there's weird weird things or even blah blah blah. And it, you know, I don't know. It's it, cuz it's hard like I think the 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 parallels of horniness and hungriness are similar because sometimes you're just not hungry when food is there or sometimes you're really oh, hungry. The don't go no, shopping on don't go shopping when you're hungry idea. Yeah, yeah, or just like but like the way that you when you're horny, just like when you're hungry, the way that you approach eating is very like I'll eat anything just anyway. Shove that in my shove, face. Yeah, and however you have to do it. Yeah. And so the the idea of foreplay and romance, you know, is the is the appetizer, is the fucking cheese plate, is right. the is the wine or the whatever. Yeah. But like in the nine course meal. But when you're early on, it's just like yeah, you take that opportunity to do whatever you have to do. So you gotta, you know, you're horny. You, you can't like set up the perfect environment. You don't have internet. Like I did. I'm glad I didn't have internet. You know, like it was all just sort of like. Imagination, like if I can imagine myself as a GI Joe, I can certainly imagine. You know, what's the? Uh, I don't know. Who's, who's the girl on GI Joe? The, there was a, there was a girl. I don't know. Actually, S Scarlet or something. Yeah. What was she? She was a civilian. I don't know. There, there seemed to be at least one female representative in the GI Joe. I world. wanted to fuck April O'Neil. A couple years younger than you. Yeah, yeah. No, from, I know. From I the know. Turtles. Yeah, I know the Turtles. From, but, but the cartoon version. Yeah, well, and the other, and the and the and the real and the version. first one, yeah, the first movie. But I, but by the time the movie came out, I was eleven. Yeah. So. The new movie? No. The old, the original. The original. Yeah. The, you know, the with with the where the two was the secret of the ooze. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Secret of the ooze. That's what we're talking about. April O'Neil. She's the secret of the ooze. She was the secret of the ooze. Did you ever see the Dark Crystal? It's the Dark Crystal. It's a Jim Henson movie, but it's like with actual puppets and things. It's Maybe. a really good, like, mystical movie. I have a couple movies in my head that I know that I saw that I was like somewhat obsessed <laughs> with, and I don't know what they are. There was one where there was a there was this kid, um, 
where he like visited like this troll in it, it felt like a movie where and I don't have enough memories to back it up but uh, and it might have never happened it might be like the Berenstain Bears Berenstain Bears thing mm, um, uh, a mandala effect and he so there's like a there's like a um there's a movie where, where maybe and then the, maybe this is other people chiming in now it might be Fred Savage there's a movie where uh, but it's a kid like that um, that's Princess Bride though is it no Bride? yeah yeah but he wasn't in it so like it's that idea but then but then the person the kid the real life kid gets into this world and it's and there's this bridge troll who's a regular dude but we know that he's a troll and then I guess he has this ability to like if necessary for combat or to scare somebody to become an ugly crazy troll mm-hmm. but he's basically just this nice troll guy um, and it's this and it's like set under mon- a bridge is it just called monsters or something no that's the one with the, this is what people have said to me before but that's the that's the Howie Mandel one with the under the bed and little oh, monsters oh yeah that little monsters so I don't know if this movie ever existed but there's a movie somewhere I mean and I was obsessed with like I don't know that kind of because David the Gnome was a thing that I was like uh, really excited about David the Gnome was a little gnome man who wrote a fox named Swift that was an animated show on Nickelodeon huh. anyway I don't know where I don't know where this came from well, it's all everything is connected. Jim Henson. So the Jim Henson movie. What's there were there were there were these uh, characters in there that were that were non. They were kind of similar to humans. They were called elflings, and they were kind of like elves, and they would ride these things. And and but they were again, they weren't human, but they were live. This is a live action movie, and it was like a. Now these are things you wanted to fuck, or these are. Yeah, things that I I was definitely attracted to and or dreaming about. Yeah. Like would having you, having dreams. Would you fuck an avatar? Would I? Yeah. Or whatever those people are called. Oh those. Well they, I think these those people are kind of visually based off of these. Is that true? Yeah. Well wow. we could look at a, a picture of my I just my internet's not good right now. Yeah. But uh yeah, so they they because def, they definitely there's like a pointy ear thing to them. There's kind of okay. like a Hanging down, you know, like the, the and you mentioned and Star Trek last night, I think. So you, so you want to fuck girls with pointy ears? <laughs> That's the thing. No, I didn't. Bless you. Thank you. Bless you. Thank you. I didn't have as many pointy ear, uh, hot female experiences in my childhood. I mean, it was pointy ear, but I think that I, uh, the, the the Star Trek though, they're all. Um, I mean, they're the most humanized aliens. Sure, sure. You know, so like. And in fact, even the more aliens, sometimes the more scantily clad, or right, right. you know, like what's your, the in the X Men, you know, the one, the the, the one that um, she's blue. Yeah, I can't she, think of what her name is right now. Anybody? Yeah. Um, I mean, it didn't hurt that they were using people like Rebecca Romaine Stamos and um, Jennifer Lawrence. Yeah, it doesn't hurt. I like my Caesar salads made with Rebecca Romaine lettuce. Yeah. But yeah, so my first, but the, the, the thing of it, I didn't, I ne- I guess there was a part of the t- time when I didn't want my own, my own cum touching me. Well, what do you do now? You just let it, you just let it fly? It just depends on the scenario, but I mean, it's, it definitely is always, I mean, ideally it's intended for somebody else. So right. To get it in that general direction is, is, is yeah. the idea, but. Well, when you're alone. But when I'm alone, it, it, it all depends. I mean, I, you, yeah, I. Now I have the foresight to get a um, paper towel, preferably. Get it? You, just, you go into? Oh, or yeah, you, or go that's the cleanup after? Either way. Interesting. There's a hard surface. Yeah, maybe clean up, up after. Yeah. Sometimes the just the doing it into or onto something on purpose to not yeah. make a mess is takes you kind of out of the moment. Right when you when you're like when sexy. you're when you're getting in there you, you found the comfortable zone and then you gotta go to another place yeah to do the finish to not be dirty yeah yeah one uh, this one dude told me that he he was masturbating on the toilet once but while going poop and and he like pooped and came at the same time yeah but that made his cum shoot oh, really him. far for him that was the, yeah. the positive one yeah. Who was it? Somebody's got somebody. Somebody was, clean up first. Somebody's got a joke. Yeah. <laughs> somebody had a had a bit about. 
you know, everybody likes the butt, you know, and then it's got good, you know, it's good sensations back there. If you don't believe me, the next time you go, boom, check your nipples, they'll be hard. <laughs> I came up with this was an option, this a lot more to the, to the comedy. Well, that's the thing I've never checked. I don't the, think I've ever checked. Yeah, I mean, that's where the... And the, I don't doubt that pooping feels good. The male... There, there's a phenomenon called the poop boner. Yeah. Um, oh, really? I'm not, yeah, I don't experience that. that. Well, it's not a full-on erection. It's just literally a little bit more of a, an engorged penis at the at the time of pooping because the the male G-spot is is the prostate. Right. So, like, you know, like the tie anal beads and the... Right rubbing of the area, the, the place between the pines, <laughs> <laughs> the place beyond the pines, uh, that is the, the thing, and if you, have you ever experienced a, uh, a Japanese toilet or a bidet? I, I, I don't know if I, yes, I don't know how much, I, how much I've used it, I think I've definitely, like, been like, let's see, um, but the, the thought of, Here's here's where I disconnect on the bidet. The, 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 I don't think water is going to do the trick. So then, if I'm going to get all of that area wet, I'm going to have to dry it afterwards. So the going to fall apart. So then I'll just end up with like well, the, the good ones have actual dryers that dry. Oh uh, really? But you still do need to do a little. But I would like I would like to have some soap. I mean, you know how long it takes for your hands to get dry under a regular dryer. Yeah, it's like kind of a while. Yeah, so I would. So I want. So the so the the, the short answer is uh, yes, and the long answer is no. But you don't use soap whenever you're doing just toilet paper, or you like wet wipes. Right. So you don't, and then so then it's like so then it's like. But then you. But then that's the trade off. Is you you know you either you either if you have a problem with that uh, level of like um, cleanliness, you either you either make sure that you're timing this thing before you're in the shower, or you just. You accept that that's what life is. That there's a little poop happening on your body at all times. Yeah. But if you're going to go to the next level, I just think it, it seems like a a, 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 a time-consuming step to not bring soap involved. Okay. Well, that's where I'm at. I mean, because then I got to dry up. So then I think my 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 thought process is, I just wet it down. And then now I'm just gonna go dry it with something that also shouldn't have poop on it. So like if I dry it with a towel, the towel's now gonna have, also gonna have poop on it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm just talking about it for the sensation, of it. right? Right. Then, and I'm, like, so I'm not sat there and just enjoyed the you got it. I the think sweet you got, sensation yeah. of the brown eye massage. Yeah, because they they'll do just a steady stream. Or there will be an oscillator where it does a little bit of that action and then, and then it pul- pulsating. I think the regular or the oscillating, the pulsating isn't as good. We were talking about it the other day about whether or not, because uh, I'm worried sometimes when it's on there, I'm worried that, that I'm going to miss. I don't want I don't want it to shoot up and over. And then somebody told me the other day, like, no, you don't miss. It's like a bullseye every time. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah? Yeah. It is like that? Maybe we're all pretty... Gonna beat this Fiero. <laughs> I like that you know that it's a Fiero. The big thing with the Fiero for a while was putting on the body kit to make it look like a Ferrari Chester Rosa. <laughs> you can get panels on it that have the little, the little stripes on it. They end up looking pretty cool. It's just a two seater. It's a real. Yeah. We always. The, yeah. There's always been one of those. Like the it's like the original on. smart car, but it's like it's a sexy car. Yeah. It's the sexiest smart car. I don't think it was ever that sexy. The idea was think? that it should be, and then the, the, the reality of it was never that it was. I mean, that's an impractical old. car. It's a, you know, it's a two-seater. It's a T-top. It doesn't have much. It doesn't have a lot of power. Uh, if you get into an accident, everyone dies. You know, it's just a lot. It's a lot. I guess you're right. Ah, dang it. I mean, you saw who was driving it. Yeah. It's like a 16 or 17 year old kid. I mean, I'm not. I haven't had a car in a long time. I wouldn't, you know. Yeah. What is that? Driving, that a, driving a, driving a. Does that have anything to do with the thing know. you told me about amusement parks? No, but I am weary to ride bikes because of that. Interesting. Um, but, yeah, especially in New York. But the damage on that is. Oh, I guess with the cars. 
I do drive cars, and uh, I mean, it's never happened in a car. Yeah. Per se. So I'm, I'm referring to the fact that you said you've been, you've been having bouts of uh, vertigo. vertigo. Yeah. So. <laughs> it, it happens. It, it happens when it, like sometimes there's an extreme temperature change. Like if I go from like super air conditioned to super hot. Yeah. And well, it's I, it's definitely like sinus and inner ear related. Okay. Because um, I get dizzy. I mean, I get dizzy at this age if I just if I shift if I get up too fast. You know what I mean? Yeah, but the, it's I'm different at. than dizzy. Okay. The dizzy is sort of like the lightheadedness that yeah. makes you sort of overall like could fall down or faint yeah. or something but this vertigo or whatever it is is a part of your um what do they call that the uh well where, wherever your balance is so like whenever you right. whenever yeah, yeah. you spin around and when you stop spinning how you feel like you're still spinning yeah that's the, that stuff happening Still, and it has to settle before. So you kind of just can't find the ground. Yeah. You don't so, know where level but th- is. This happens just as like without spinning. Right. It's like I've just been spun, and then all of a sudden, like I take a step, and it's like boom. Yeah. It's crazy, and I now when it happens, I, I can, um, because it used to kind of precipitate a little bit of a panic attack after because I didn't know what was going on. Oh. It was very disorienting. Yeah. But now that I know that it's happened multiple times, I, I know that, and and so I, then I just have to sort of stop and focus, and it, it's weird because you think you just, you just grab a hold of something and just no, lay down I, I, I just stand. I mean, I don't. I've never fallen down, but I've I've I, I stumbled because it only ha- it happens real quick, and then it still kind of has an effect. But turning the head left to right isn't doesn't really affect it what what affects it or enhances the experience or makes it worse whatever is tilting up and down and okay you don't, you don't think about that but really this <coughs> tilting up and down <coughs> it's why you look down when you're i mean or you have to look just forward or something when you're balancing you know you have to look one way you can't be looking up you can't you know oh, like the like with this. like a ballerina she whips her head around she just picks one spot yeah and, uh, but the, the focus that you have to have, like, so I just kind of, like, I just have to stare at some one thing in the distance yeah. and kind of stay on that. But it, it's pretty crazy, and so I don't ride, I don't really ride bikes, um, because of that, or, uh, like, if I was in a car, it wouldn't, not that it wouldn't happen, or it wouldn't affected maybe but the it's it's when you're standing that you really need your balance you know right. or like on a bike right. in a car you don't really you're not really balanced you're just in the seat yeah I was inside I was going to see if I could drive after Switch seats. Uh-huh. We'll take the seat out so you have to stand. Right? Uh-huh. Yeah. We, we were talking about that, right? We were talking about. Uh, were we talking about how how it'd be fun to have a, have a car seat that was suspended from the ceiling? Is that us? Were you in that conversation? A car seat that was suspended from the ceiling, so there's no there's no under seat. You just oh yeah yeah float. oh yeah. Would yeah, that be like a safety issue? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that seems like a good like. You have like an idea the Millennium that, Falcon sort yeah, of. Yeah, you have an idea that you think is fun, and then you and then you see it through, and then you start actually seeing all the sides of it, and then you get back to that the thing that already exists is the best invention. Mm-hmm. So that's what happened with that one because we were like, oh, it'd be cool, you hang it from the ceiling, or whatever. It's like a no friction kind of thing because we were talking about how the seat in this car generally uh, makes my legs go to sleep. I have some back problems, yeah, with it, and that kind of thing. That's why I got the massager in here and some of the other things. Uh, so then to have a thing where you're, you know, your legs were suspended or you're doing the thing, but then the problem becomes how many straps you need so that if you get into a wreck, you don't, you know, smash into the sides of the car uh, and knock yourself out. So then that's a safety concern. So again, all of it came down to the fact that it's just better to have an actual chair in the car. Yeah. That's the safest option. Yeah, I guess it is. I, I don't know. I mean, the... 
probably safer versions of those chairs. My my brother had like Volkswagen bugs. Like he read yeah. the bugs and like would drop them and yeah. put rims and stuff on them and paint them different colors. Yeah. Like those were one of the coolest, you know, cars, but they're very old and like the back seats are super small and they only right. have the lap belt and even even the front seats sort of had just a lap belt. But that even even the inside that it kind of felt like, oh, this is kind of old and maybe not safe. There's a good amount of room around things. Yeah. And the, the, the Volkswagen Beetle itself actually it seemed like a pretty sturdy car. Right. You know, like it had the, the engine was in the back, so but the the you know yeah that's always that's the thing still, we're talking about yesterday was, was that that's the most unsafe part of cars is that the engines in the front and when you crash into something the engine has to go somewhere and sometimes it goes through your chest and so that's the you know that's and that's where the safe like the, the Subaru the the safety of this car is that it's an engine that's called a boxer engine where the pistons run like this. Okay. Right? And then <coughs> what happens is when you get into an accident in the front, all the bolts break and the and the engine goes underneath the car. Oh wow. So okay. you crash and you leave the engine back there. It's on fire there. So um, that you don't so that oh, you wow. don't so that you don't get heart wound in the chest. And that's what's that's what that's what's that that's what the Tesla is experiencing is the is the safety uh, off the charts because there is nothing to heart wound you in the chest. And so they can make a rigid frame, and then they, you know, they also make. They found that you know the things crumpling is what takes away energy, right? So they, it's actually better to have things crumple between uh -huh. you and the thing, so that all the energy can like, get get uh -huh. redistributed, just like you know the opposite of, of conduction, you know, with uh, you know, insulation is the, the idea that it's the energy has to go away so that it doesn't get to you. So then you got something like the bug. Which, in theory, because it's so hard and it's a rock and it's a thing, but then even though you don't get any impact, what happens is you know, the, your central nervous system, your spine, your neck, all of the things, your vertebrae, and they all get ruptured and whatever because you've, you've gone from a speed to a, to a stop in such a fast period of time. So whereas you might not, you might not have a black eye or, or a broken nose like you would from a, an airbag, uh, your spine might be whiplash is like a very possibly permanent thing. Yeah. Yeah, whiplash. Whiplash. It is. Whiplash. It's not just a show in New York I can't seem to get on. <laughs> Wait, which one's whiplash? The, um, it's the, UCB. the Sunday show, right? It's the, uh, it's the Mon uh, Monday show. The Monday show. I've done it a couple times, but uh, the guy just, just doesn't. He doesn't like it? No. He doesn't like that you show up without sleeves on? Yeah, he's got a lot of rules. He doesn't like that you show up with peanut butter on your knuckles? He's got a lot, he's, he's like got a lot of comedy rules for, for an indie, an indie oh, yeah? PM show. Yeah. What are the rules? I don't know. I don't know what the rules are, but I... He's never going to watch this. You're fine. <laughs> if you're watching, Jeremy... <laughs> I'm not associated with him. I'd like to be on. The, I'd like to be on the show. Sometime. He's gonna watch it until you tag him. <laughs> UCB Whiplash. Like do all, do all the SEO for the right. for the thing. Right. Next, I'm burning bridges. Well, there's no bridge burn because it's like if somebody's not if somebody's not giving you the fucking yeah. Like, I mean, it's not like I've been asking to do that show for for quite a while. In fact, yeah. but just the times that I did and the sort of thing that it made me feel was like getting the run around and not it, yeah. it, just, it just I was like I'll just take my energy elsewhere because there's I've already performed at the best club in the country and they won't headline you know yeah, like, yeah, yeah. from that club and that's the thing that's like yeah it's like the lesson is better it's better to just be like oh not put not put all the weight and importance on this one thing because as soon as you do right. that thing controls you it rules yeah. you yeah and comedy is already the thing that's doing that or right. jokes and ideas I don't need other sub rulers ruling right. this thing that's already being ruled by the thing that you know is making me think like oh yeah it, it, it's tough right because New York has does have a lot of that thing it has a lot of the thing where like these are the six places you should be doing comedy and if you're not you're not relevant yeah and it becomes uh, it becomes a, a, a pretty significant weight 
and a burden to have to like think about you know like you that joke about all, all the places you haven't been on like all the television yeah. shows you haven't been on yeah um, and that bumps you out it's like you know in a sense because there's these circles running at it and, and you know at times and sometimes they, they connect and sometimes they disconnect and sometimes they, inter- they, they collide and it's like if you're not in a bunch of those colliding circles at the same time it starts to feel like you're not even a part of the thing that you are definitely a part of yeah it's just a, it's a tough it's a tough thing especially yeah. considering you know just like any other <laughs> job they want it like you know the most successful way to do it is, is to completely immerse yourself in it and remove any other outside factors and that's just hard to do yeah it's like you know, anytime I could be with a girlfriend or a friend or a family is not a moment I could be at the place where the guy could see me yeah you know so it's like Finding that balance is a nightmare. Yeah, it is. It's uh, bump, just bump you out about that. Oh man! <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, we're on the road. <laughs> we're nowhere. Uh, we're on our way to Memphis. We're gonna we're gonna probably get some good food. If I can if I can find a way to find us a blues place to watch uh, somewhere in the vicinity of twenty minutes of the show, uh, so it's not too out of the way. Uh, I'm gonna get my back cracked in a new place. You know, we got we got a lot to look forward to. We're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna do comedy in a place that neither one of us have been before. And it's I've been in Tennessee a number of times, but this is one of the I've been in Chattanooga, Nashville, yeah. Knoxville. Um, what else? Those those that's places. That's all places. Yeah. I think those are the places. Those are all the places. And and Memphis. I don't know if there's another Tennessee like. Uh, no, I guess not. We said Chattanooga, right? Yeah, it's in Chattanooga. It's all of them. Chattanooga's great. Um, always performed at JJ's Bohemia. Yeah, I, I did that one um, eight years ago. Yeah, it's been around for a while, but it's yeah. it's the one that keeps keeps coming up. It's just it's just that was the first time I got outside New York and saw another comedy scene that I was like, I'm so glad this is happening somewhere else. Like where it's just like and like was comedians came out and they supported and they were just excited. Yep. That somebody from anywhere else wanted to do comedy where they were doing comedy. And that was just something great about it. And then I found that they were tied pretty uh, significantly to, like, the Atlanta scene. <coughs> and, like, yeah, the it's pretty close. Scene. It's pretty... Right, um, it's like 90 minutes. It's in between... It's in between Nashville. Yeah, that little circle is fun. And that's what I found about the Midwest, too, is that it's like, I'm not that far from anything. I mean, you know, I might have to do 10 hours in the car, like, today, like, to eat uh, and that was just kind of a faux pas on my end because I shouldn't have agreed to a gig in Eaton when I was when I knew I had to be back in Missouri but um, but now you're going to Nashville I'm going to Nashville to, to cut you know cut a little bit of dry and I'm a little bit of a lunatic I, like if it's if it's under four hours I, almost in any like in any physical state I can get that thing done um, so that's you know so I like to do the drive at night because I, I know I know I can will myself awake and nothing's going to happen But, um, yeah, so then I, so then tomorrow I only have four or five hours to go. I mean, you know, what have you learned, uh, on the road and seeing other places? Do you, know, do you find that every place... Starbucks is your friend. ...is different? Do you find that every place is the same? Do you find that there are, you know, identities of places that are undeniable? I mean, uh, yeah, I think, I, you know, the highways, the blue highways, the, the back roads, and the, you know, even the interstates and the things, you know, you got McDonald's everywhere, gas stations everywhere, but yep. but then typically there's the, you know, like that little strip mall over there has a little, its own little personality, yep. its own little font, even this McDonald's looks different than I've seen most McDonald's, yeah. you know, like that, that shade. Right, yeah, you know, but it, but it's still the same thing, and I think that's having having those things on the road. Like even when I was in in Korea, you know, traveling there, South Korea, and the travel areas in different places where they would have a McDonald's, <laughs> it was sort of just comforting, just because even though you don't go there, 
knowing that it's there is comforting and just having those little mental comforts helps get you a little bit further or okay I'm still around where I can kind of be familiar or take care of business because like human personal needs when you're on the road like having a place to sleep yeah have you know having a place to shower and I prefer staying I mean I stay in hotel school but I prefer staying with people because you get you get a real you know vibe of the place that's with exactly how, how, how the I people feel. that you stay with are and yeah hotels and, are fine and they happen and they even but have the thing of they're like, all this the same. is the area of town that you're supposed to be at yeah this is the area of town you don't go to you know but you you know and in a sense you don't let that um, sink too deep in because you know you can't everybody has the same interest as you so you know, every once in a while when the guy goes that's definitely not the place you want to go to and then they yeah. describe it you go that's exactly the place I want yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, but at a hotel, you just go, "Hey, where's the spot to get a pancake?" And they go, well, "We have breakfast, continental breakfast, right here, sir." Yeah, yeah. And you're like, "No, like, what the hell? Do you even live in this town?" And I don't know if they're like not allowed to tell you to go to fucking, you know, the early bird cafe, or they just don't care enough to do any research. Some hotels, the like, uh, the the hotel, at least the the last one that was last there, but I think it's still there hotel that they put you up at at the Drop Comedy Club in South Bend, Indiana. Uh, there's a steak and shake in the park, basically in the parking lot of the hotel. Yeah. And I thought that, you know, that's as charming as a hotel has ever gotten to me. Yeah. Is having a steak and shake right there. Yeah. Um, and it is nice to sometimes have the, you know, it's definitely easier to jerk off in a hotel than it is a that's that's stranger's true. apartment. That's true. That's like that's the first order of business when you do when you do get a chance to go to a hotel. Um, also, like you know, I rarely watch TV. Whatever this little town was, Mammoth Springs. Uh, I've seen three homeless people. I've only been in the town for thirty seconds. Mm. The, uh, Must be a good town. Like, they're like grifters and like. Uh, it's probably a good town if you see homeless people. It's yeah. probably an all right town. Yeah. I don't know. Because people want to go there. <laughs> yeah. Right? Or like <laughs> or going there's, out yeah, of their there's way. people that are choosing the homeless here, mm-hmm. or the it's nice or so people. There we go, Shorty's Rib Shack and Barbecue. What about like a Riverview Motel? Would you? Uh, I don't know. It's like look, if it's a if it's a solution, like me and Andrew Frank were driving between Amarillo and Albuquerque twice, and, and just ended up with the, it's like that's like the picturesque Route 66. That still exists in those little side, you know, uh, roadside motels, and they're fucking, they're none, none's better than another. But you know, we just need a crash, and, and it's like we know it's gonna be grimy, but it's fine. There's something fun about that, just because you know you can wake up and go to one of these like fun coffee shops that used to be something else. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's something about that, but you know, I would never, I would never want to stay in a place like that for a week. Yeah. Although knowing that there's, you know, like the shorty barbecues across the street or whatever. But that's the problem. There's not enough shorty barbecue places in this country anymore. There's not enough. There's not enough diners. I come from a place where, I, where there's always a 24 diner, 24 hour diner. So that's like that's what I kind of calibrated my life to be. Uh, you know, uh, Are you talking Jersey. For, yeah, Jersey, upstate New York. Like, yeah. So I'm always like, the what's city the doesn't diner? have good diners. No, though. no, they have no all. good diners. Not at all. There's like some passable ones, but they're all expensive and yeah. not the. Well, but you know, they they had to adapt to what was the the you know the nature of business, I mean, you know, the, I get why those diners don't stick around, you know, uh, but that's kind of, you know, that's what I'm looking for. I mean, you know, it's like, look, how much money are you really making on $4 eggs? You know, you can't sustain a business with that kind of uh, situation, especially in the, in the day and age of chain restaurants, but that was, you know, that was what I thought was cool time was, you know, going to these diners, just the guy, the, the guy who cares, you know, I was obsessed with that show, diners driving the dives for a while, you know, just the guy who actually gives a shit, and takes the time, to, he, you know, he makes his own fucking ketchup, like, I yeah. love that guy, you know, is ketchup your, your dipping no, sauce? No, I don't really, I don't really fuck with ketchup, but you know what I mean, that's just an example of, like, that's, like, Heinz did it perfect, we know that, it's done, it's a done deal, you get Heinz, but then the guy that goes, you know what? I can do better than Heinz, and here's why. And he makes some ketchup. That's a that's a guy. That's the culinary guy, idea yeah. that I that I that I that I kind of you know I'm obsessed with. It's a, you know, that somebody actually gives a shit. Like they're gonna make their own uh, Thousand Island. They're gonna you know they're gonna do all the things just for that 
extra touch. The extra touch on the Reuben. You know, he smoked his own fucking pastrami. Or cured his own pastrami. I really want to get in front of this guy. Right? Boxing us out, this truck yeah. got in front of the other guy. And he boxed us out. Yeah, yeah. It's like I that's the, that's the mentality I don't know. Maybe this is this is the ego thing. It's like the same guy who felt it was important for him to get in front of that guy because he knows he's gonna go faster than that guy, doesn't feel it important for me to get in front of him knowing that I'm gonna go faster than him. That's the disconnect. Like mm. I drive in a manner that says, listen, I, I wanna go eighty miles an hour most of the time and I'm gonna to try to do that, and if somebody gets behind me who wants to go 90, I'm not gonna to try to block them from going 90, his life doesn't get intersect with mine. He goes past me and we're done. But there's a lot of this on the roads where there's this possession that I don't, I don't understand. I think, we, I think we do that with everything. What state has the worst drivers? I think all of them. <laughs> I think everybody's a terrible driver. And I think, and the problem is everybody, thinks they're a ter- everybody who is a terrible driver thinks they're a good driver. The people that actually know that they're a bad driver stay away from everyone uh-huh. or they don't drive like Adam doesn't drive he just won't drive he like there was one night where we had two cars somewhere I was sober the other person in the car was clearly drunk and we asked Adam it would be cool if you would drive that car and he was like I think you know you're almost better off letting the drunk person drive <laughs> so we just, we just left the car so I appreciate the guy that knows that he's a bad driver but everybody out here thinks that they're the good driver and they think that they that they should be responsible for the speed that everybody else goes do you think in New York do you think cabbies or Uber drivers are better drivers I don't know I've encountered some bad Uber drivers here's the thing that I find I, I, I've been trying to find out how to report an Uber driver as not per- you can't report them if you're not in the car you can only report the Uber driver if you're in like I've had worst times with Uber drivers as a, just a regular driver on the road. Yeah. And then I think I can, like, make a report. But there's no way to call Uber. Like, I'll go on to customer service and they'll be like, which trip are you discussing? And I'm like, no, no, no. I, I wasn't on a trip. Somebody else's trip was the problem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you could, but you could probably do that with a cab. Report it? Yeah. Yeah, theoretically, it'd be hard to find. It's like that's what's great about a cab is like there's so many, so many cars. So they're all the same. You can't. There's no way you can pull the 72 numbers off the side of it and yeah. fast enough to be able to like report this guy. And then even if it was like they don't, they have no idea who's driving that car that day. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So there's no there's no accountability. I mean, pretty much if you get to the place, the cab driver did his job. Right? Like, what's the threshold? If you don't like how he drives, and I think you become a different person because you don't care about traffic laws when you're in the back seat. Yeah. You want to be somewhere. Yeah, I actually don't care about how somebody drives per se outside of efficiency. Yeah. Or inside of it. You know, right. as long as they're trying to be efficient. But if somebody's trying to, the guy had an Uber driver in, uh, what was that, what did I do the show, it was in Columbia, South Carolina recently, and this guy, he came and picked me up, it was actually at this chiropractic, parking lot of chiropractic place, because the the place I was staying at was right behind there, I just thought it was easier to put the address for the chiropractic. Yeah. And so he picks me up, and I'm going, I always get burgers whenever I'm in a place, because that's how I like to, I like to see the different places. It was like, oh, where's the best burger? Where's a good burger? Yeah. It was recommended this one place. I was meeting the producer, comedian of the show at the place, and this guy, he had the GPS going, and this is... Oh, that's nice. He was... He was, uh, you know, um, Columbia, South Carolina, it's not that difficult to navigate. Like, he kind of knew where we were because he was talking about the environment. He was a really nice guy. He was retired from someplace else. Yeah. But he ended up driving me beyond 
not being able to make the turn to turn to go the direction. Yeah. So we had to go totally out of the way and then back. So like what happened? Then, what happened? What happened was the quote the quoted price that was quoted, which was like six bucks. Yeah. Turned out to be like eleven or twelve dollars right. because he took so long. Right. But he was a really nice guy. Right. And to me, it was like, oh, I would, you know, all this extra money I'm paying would have this nice conversation with this guy. Sure. But if somebody had done that, well, you're, well, you're a nice guy, and you're trying to now <laughs> justify it. But the, but yeah, the the efficiency when there's money involved becomes obviously. Yeah, and especially when they have a quoted price, and Big then it's a different thing. I'm, yeah. I'm just kind of like, okay, well, I can't keep. I can't keep thinking it's going to be one thing and having it be another. Right. Where I don't desire that. Right, yeah, you wouldn't have done. Well, no. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. It's and like, you also wouldn't have, you know, you maybe would have made other arrangements to get to the place or pick a different place based on the price. Yeah, and I mean, I knew it was good, and, you know, the lunch was bought for me anyway, so at that point it was like, okay, everything is fine with the world, but I, uh, I really felt, you know, but. It, I don't care how they drive, they'll get to where they're going. Um, but I think women have a different experience with Uber drivers, especially not so much cabs, because I don't think cabs are as talky because they got the glass. Yeah. <laughs> typically. Yeah. But Uber drivers can be, and then also creepy. Like my girlfriend has had some, and her friends have had some experiences with Uber drivers that are kind of. Where they feel insane. Yeah. Well, and, and uh, dudes are creepy, you know. <coughs> yeah. Dudes are creepy, and and um, and I think women, you know, and then but it's a heightened experience because now it feels less safe because it's in a car that you don't know, and you you're like, oh, I put myself in the situation, so that you, you know your brain starts magnifying it. Yeah. Uh, and you start doing the what if thing. Yeah, and whereas, like, oh, I'm taking an Uber back instead of the train for safety, right? Like, the right. Uber is a safe choice, but then even the safe choice has its own other danger element, too, right. you know, which is actually even theoretically more dangerous. I mean, even though even though they have a, they can be traced or locate, you know, that yeah. person is documented. Yeah, that doesn't, make you, that doesn't make you feel that much greater yeah. when, when somebody's dick comes out of the car. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, dudes are creepy. I mean, we are. And we yeah, don't, the, we don't the always creep, try to be creepy. And we don't even know sometimes that we are being creepy. Yeah, creepy is definitely, uh, seems to be more of a masculine term. Right? Yeah. Like, it's hard a, for creep, a creep is a man, you know, it generally is a man. Yeah. Who, um, who, uh, who tries to. Overstep but, the but boundaries of sexuality. But it could still be a gay man, right? Like, yeah, for sure. Like a gay man. Tries to overstep the boundaries of sexuality. Yeah, uh, I've, I've been I've been creeped uh, by gay men many times. I've been on stage uh, at a show where a gay men decided to yell, "Take your shirt off." That's creepy, you know. But if a woman yelled, "Take your shirt off," maybe I would maybe I would I would, I would label it differently than creepy. Did you do it just because you were afraid? You feared for your I better comply and then. No, I know. I'm just gonna. This is gonna be a great story for Facebook tomorrow. Because then we would know what the next. Because then, because then there would be just be a next one. Because there's no end to creepiness. That's like there's no bounds. That's the that's that's the scary part about creepiness. Because even if you you know you comply with uh, you know the shirt off, the next thing then there's some sort of like. It's like a foot thing now, yeah. and then the foot thing's over, and then it's like a dripping thing on you. Thing, you know what I mean? Like, there's no bounds. Because once you cross a line, you just you know, keep crossing the line. It's like comedy. You just we just keep trying to, to to toe the line as far as we can. Is it toe the line like T O W or T O E? Like keep well, your toe. Since we are talking about, uh, do you know it? Yeah, creeping, creepy, creepy foot stuff. No, it's, but it's, I think it's toe the line. Because we have to do it. No, T O W. Right? 
I guess so. But I like, think, I think it literally has to do with towing things from a line. Tow, I do, you know, like, but I, because the, the, the saying makes sense, but like, tow the line. I know that, I know that there's a lot of things that I don't know, so. And there's definitely a lot of words and expressions that we were given that I have no clue what or why. And sometimes I don't even agree with their meaning. Persnickety? <laughs> well, that's a word, not an expression. Um, uh, uh, goodness gracious. <laughs> oh, my goodness gracious. I generally agree with that. My goodness. <laughs> uh, I don't agree with anything you're doing with it. That's not true. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is a beautiful dress. It is. Uh, let's 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 wrap it. Uh, the, the, what I find about this this podcast is that uh, it just it's too it's always two interesting people talking, uh, and doesn't end up always being uh, funny, which is kind of what I what I enjoy. I don't I don't like the podcast that uh, is just a constant trying to be entertaining and being and cracking jokes. We talked about life a little bit. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. We talked yeah. about... Uh, there's, enough of, there's enough of the ones that people are being funny and laughing at each other. Yeah. We didn't... There's, well, there's enough that. of the ones that are, you know, constantly entertaining you and uh, living up to expectations. We don't... We don't believe in that kind of thing. Here. <laughs> this is the Comedy's Underwhelming Podcast. Comedy, best... Comedy's worst kept secret. <laughs> no, it's gonna stay a secret, apparently. Best kept. What is a best kept? That's a saying. That's best the idea. The yeah, kept. the best kept secret. The idea is that you should have known about this shit. But you don't like secrets. Interesting that you should go to right. best kept secret. Right. That's the, yeah. But you don't like secrets, but you like the best. Well, it's a, it's a defiant. It's a defiant uh, uh, naming. It's because the idea is uh, it shouldn't be a secret. That it's, so we're aligning with 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 my values, which is. Uh, there's no reason why they shouldn't know these great comedians like Ben Kronberg. Comedy's dirty little secret. Comedy's dirty little secret. In a bad boy. Uh, bad is this boy. the comedy's best kept secret? What do you do? You want to plug a thing? Or you're in Memphis now? When it's does it come happen. out? When does it, it come out? It'll come out in a couple of weeks. Oh, so okay. You're gonna plug the Hoboken Comedy Festival? Yeah, I finally, yeah. I finally got you in the Hoboken uh, Comedy yeah, Festival. Yeah, I'm gonna be on the Hoboken Comedy Festival. I was at Hoboken's. <laughs> what else are you playing in September and October? Um, I'm going to be, you know, a hope opening, and in October I'm going to be doing some shows in Colorado, one at the um, Bohemian Beer Garden in Boulder, and um, um, to be determined, Denver right now, because nice. I'm from there, so I do a lot of shows right now, yeah. deciding if I want to do my own show there, or That's just it. jump on shows that are there. Yeah, but either way, you'll be there. I'll and, be there. Uh, and possibly... Be the, you'll be the special guest on nights when people don't know you're gonna be there. Yeah, you know, maybe. drop in. Do you yeah. drop in status? Uh, yeah, I, I can kind of drop in, but it, it don't feel so special. I'd, I, you know, because if I do my own show, I can still do drop ins on the other shows. Yeah, but also make a little money on that show as opposed to drop in for nothing. Drop in for nothing. Yeah. You said there's a secret show. Is a one a.m. secret show? In Denver. Oh no, that's in Atlanta. That's in Atlanta. But that's oh. but that's gonna be before this podcast comes well, out. But that's really great. If you're ever in Atlanta, check out the um, One AM Secret Show or Star Bar. One AM Secret Show is on uh, sa- uh, Saturday nights, and Star Bars on Monday nights are really good shows and, and cool bars. And then um, also the Relapse Theater, but. Uh, so what if we, if we learn that um, you should uh, you should get a therapist and not fuck him? Yeah, don't fuck or her. It could yeah. be a her. Yeah, we still don't know. Uh, don't fuck them. We still we still don't know. Don't fuck it. We still don't know what. You can have a therapist, but don't fuck it. <laughs> we still don't know how to spell toe the line, and we don't know how far we can toe the line on fingering your friend before they're not your friend. So those are the takeaways from today's episode. Uh, thank you for listening and watching. We're on iTunes, Google Play, uh, Amazon, and Stitcher app. 
Uh, if you found us on the one, we're also on the other one you didn't find us on. Thank you for watching, listening. Check out the the, the, the uh, hashtag Comedy's Best Kept Secret for all the shows that we've been involved in on uh, Instagram, Twitter, and all the other fun stuff. Thank you guys for being a part of this. And thank Ben Cromberg yeah, for being Thank you. Here. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Really, thank you. 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 Thank